Zero One, this is Brick Control, you're clear to land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. Welcome, Auntie Marish is preparing for the latest intake of fine upstanding members to the resort. But before we start, for the benefit of viewers in black and white, I'm the bloke in the red jacket playing from left to right in a sweep of formation. So let's hear from the spare man at the back, the Games Master. Welcome to the Games Ring. I do hope you're happily installed and that your rooms are not too damp. It can be a problem at this time of year. My first spree tonight involves a schizophrenic young scamp Kid Chameleon. And if you wish to alleviate my midwinter ennui, you will need to guide him to the perilous caverns of Underskull Mountain 2 in two minutes or less. Here's looking at you, Kid. And controlling our multiple personality friend tonight is Richard Sylvester from Berkshire. <laughs> Richard, how long have you been practicing the game? Practicing a couple of hours a night, something like that. A couple of hours a night. Okay, now what, what are some of the problem areas in it? It's a very tough, tight challenge, this. Well, yeah, it's a bit tricky to start. The end's a bit difficult, but it's the main mid bit in the middle that's worrying me. Okay. <laughs> all right, so all three have got to look out for it. If you'd like to sit yourself down in the games playing chair, Richard, we'll get ready to start. And joining me, chez moi, for this challenge is Neil West from Mega. Welcome, Neil. Thanks, Dominic. Right, now, Neil, we know this is a tough, tight challenge. Any tips for Richard? Yeah, what he's got to remember here is that the time element is very tight indeed. Sometimes it might be better to take a couple of hits from a baddie and run straight through than waste a few seconds waiting for him to get out of the way. OK, some sound advice there. Just to reiterate the challenge, Richard has two minutes to get through Under Skull Mountain 3. Richard, are you ready? Yes. Then off you go. OK, they're off. OK, now he's just playing normal Kid Chameleon, but he can change into lots of other creatures. Yeah, now. that's right. And if he can grab himself hold of a helmet, all sorts of things can happen, Dominic. OK, but as it does. <laughs> that's right. But for the moment, pair of trainers, pair of sunglasses, it's all you need. He can move really quickly and... Oh, they've got a little flip up there. That's one of the advantages of being Kid Chameleon. That's right. Only he can do that. But what we've got to hear... Oh, what have we got here? OK, if you can grab that prize, yeah. It's Jason! He's turned into Maniacs, the axe-throwing monster. That's right. OK, now obviously no baddies are going to mess with him now, Neil. That's right. He's pretty hard, to be honest. OK, we've had 32 seconds and uh, he's doing all right so far. He's not any slip-ups right. yet. He's got to break these blocks, then through the top. That's right, then zoom down here. Now, Kid Chameleon would have been quicker at this point, but Jason Maniacs is a lot harder in a rut. And obviously so, that, that guy there would have shot out flames uh, ad right. infinitum. That's right. So Maniacs was a good choice here. And probably he's probably going to be best to stay with Maniacs all the way through. He needn't change again. OK, obviously there's no room for error on these little moving platforms Not at here. all. Not at all. He's doing OK. Um, all these jumps are pretty pixel perfect, or well, they've got to be, um, and he's doing OK. OK, we're just over halfway through the challenge. One minute, five seconds gone. Um, it's good, but I mean, this is going to be so tight, this challenge. It is, right. I don't know if you can see up here, this little four number here, that shows he's got four gems. If he can collect 20 of those, then he can fire a sort of smart bomb, which will take out all the enemies on the level. Um, it might be worthwhile trying to collect those, but I don't think he's going to get a chance to collect 20. Okay, he's just hovering around there. Oh, that, that guy was dead anyway. That's okay, right. we have got only 30 seconds left okay. here. Is he nearing the end, Neil? Yeah, he's not far off at all. Unfortunately, he's really just... He's now, you know, his fate now lies in the hands of the game. He's just got to wait for the right platforms oh, to come along. He should have made that, that jump. jump there. That, that jump. could prove costly. We've only got 18 seconds left. Absolutely. This is going to be very, very tight. That was a very tight he's jump, but slide. it was No, possible. he's not sliding. He's finding a little secret he's thing here. Yeah, he's doing it OK. He's got to get through. You see, he took the hit. He's gone. got 10 left. He's coming down. He's at the flag. He's done it. And he's made Seven it. Seven seconds left. Yeah. And Richard has won tonight's challenge. He took the hits, went for the time, and made it. Now, Richard, you said it would be quite tough earlier on. How tough did you find it? Under the pressure of the lights and everything, it was quite tough, yeah. And oh, did you enjoy wielding a big chopper? 
Yeah, I did. Okay. Right then, well, Richard, as one of tonight's winners, you are the proud owner of the Gearsmaster Gordon Joystick. <laughs> for tonight's contestant, Richard Sylvester. The sunlight of life dawns once more on one of our sturdy challengers, and the warm front continues with this week's reviews. This week we get all megalomaniacal as we look at God Games. First up on the Super Nest, aptly named Gods. You are Hercules, striving for immortality through four levels of jumping, shooting, puzzle solving play. Gods is a spotless conversion of the old Amiga game and I'm afraid that's its problem. Um, it just doesn't come up to scratch as far as console games are concerned. This time round is a lot faster and smoother, which is a welcome um, enhancement because the original tend to slow down and become jerky when the going got tough. Gods is a really worthwhile purchase. I think it deserves a place in every Super Nintendo owner's collection. Next up, Populous 2. It's still you against another civilization. There's still 999 levels, but this time it's steeped in Greek mythology. A far better game than the original, offering deeper strategy, far more enhanced graphics, and a whole lot more godly effects. It's really fun when you build up enough power to unleash a volcano right in the middle of your opponent's cities. In terms of difficulty, it's a lot harder than the first one. It looks and feels a lot better. Finally, also on the Mega Drive, Utopia. There you are, building your city, when all of a sudden an alien race decides to enter the fray. You have to give them what for through ten levels. Utopia doesn't have quite the same oomph as a game like maybe Populous or Megalomania. Um, there are combat elements, but unfortunately it doesn't have quite the same ass-kicking feel as Populous. It's enjoyable, but not addictive. Utopia is sort of a mixture of SimCity and Populous. It's an excellent conversion on one of the better Super NES games around. Well, I've just been down to the cabins to check that our celebrity's been kept in the manner to which he's accustomed. So let's waste no further time and find out what challenge he'll be facing. My second challenge is one that requires brain rather than brawn. The game is called Blastris, and the object is to form vertical lines on the right-hand side of the screen by shooting away blocks that get in the way. Each time a line is formed, that line will disappear. For the purposes of this particular challenge, you will need to construct five lines. But to spice things up a bit, I put the game on its hardest setting. On with the thinking caps. For this furious test of hand-eye coordination and mental matter, please welcome the Krypton Factor's main man, Gordon Barnes. So, Gordon. Thank you. Right, this is for you, I think. Wonderful. Now, Gordon, the thing I've always wanted to know is, have you ever tried the assault course on your show? I have. I have done it twice, and I can tell you I will never, ever be doing it again. <laughs> it's a bit of a much rough ride, is it? It's, it's much too, I'm much too old. It's much too demanding. <laughs> well, what is your actual individual Krypton factor, then, Gordon? Well, you'll probably find out in a minute. It's uh, only good if I've got the answers in front of me as well as the questions. Your whole job is on the line here, Gordon. How'd you Thank fancy you. the chances? Thank you for setting me up. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. Well, I'll have a go. That's the best I can do. I've hardly ever played a computer game in my life. I'm two, gen two generations too old, I think. Oh, not at all, not at all. Well, if you want to find out if Gordon's Krypton Factor is large enough to win a golden joystick, join us after the break. <laughs> joined us at a very exciting moment. We are about to test how high Gordon Burns' Krypton Factor really is on Blastris with the Super NES Super Scope. 
by my side, and that's the way I always like it to be, is Stephen Arimathea. Welcome, Stephen. Good evening, my little disciple. All right. Now, Stephen, tell us a little bit about this game. Well, it's really, it's all good, clean fun, Dominic, but it's really a perversion of Tetris, and uh, the blocks fall from left to right, and uh, Gordon has to shoot out the blocks to complete the lines. Okay, well, what we've done is we actually determined to stitch Gordon up on this one. So we've put him on the hardest level. If he gets five lines, he walks away with a golden joystick and his career is intact. Gordon, are you ready? I'm ready. Then off you go. So here goes Gordon then. Oh, a little awkward block to start off with here, Steve. He's going to have to shoot some of that. That was a good shot. That's okay, he's cleared he it there. He didn't need that second shot. Now, as you can see from the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, that's I'm... the number of shots he has left. Okay, he can't actually move the blocks on the screen. He's going to have to shoot them. He's going to have to shoot more than that. Oh, that's nice shoot of a god in there. Right, yes. He's going to have to take out a lot of these ones. Oh, that's all right, like that. I mean, every four blocks that fall, Dominic, he gets two extra shots. So he can actually conserve his uh, shots for later in the game. He's doing very well indeed here. Now he's left with a rather tall column at the side there. Yeah, and he's got to shoot, shoot that one. He's got to shoot, shoot these, these. ones. Well played. That's okay. Oh, he's got oh, to shoot the shoot top one and that one. That's it. And the middle one, the middle one. He's got the sh Oh, nice well shoot in there from Gordon. He's, He's been got to very... get five lines. He's got the shoot. A good shot. Oh, lovely. Very He's been smart very thinking. unlucky with these. Oh, uh, quickly shoot the other one. Oh, He's playing a smart game here, Steve, is Gordon. Yeah. Oh, he cleared away some of the other blocks there. Oh, again, he's really taking this one to the wire. Oh, no, shoot, no, that, shoot that the one. bottom bit. That's, That's nice shooting here. Very nearly completed. Here we Three go. Lines. Shoot the middle one. The other That's one. it. OK, it's well coming This is going to be two lights complete for Gordon here. There they go. Everything falls down to the right now, side of the screen. he's got to start shooting some of this here. And one more bit of it. Oh, he's shot that one. I think he did best shoot all these ones, yeah. actually, Steve. He's got the shots for it. He's got to shoot that middle one there, I yeah. think. Shoot the middle one, Gordon. That's oh, it. lovely shooting. He's got That's another, another line. line. Going to have to shoot the bottom right one of this one. The other one, he's going to have to no. shoot it. Oh, he's managed to shoot it. Oh, no, he's got to shoot quite a lot here. <laughs> And the other one, the other bottom one, bottom Very one. unlucky. Oh dear, oh, now yeah. but you only needs to get two this lines, two one. more lines, so it's, he's doing all right, actually. Yeah. He just needs Here some more on the side. This is very fortunate. Now he just wants to leave this yeah. one. It's just getting very exciting here. All he needs, he's going to have to shoot shoot this one, Sam. He's going to have to shoot yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's all right, now he wants one at the bottom right. We've got another one left, but that's okay here. Oh, they're it's not so bottom room. He's got to shoot them all here. He's not missing much tonight, though, no, Steve, is he? he's playing a waiting game on this. He really just has to wait Shoot for them that. all again. Oh, this is close. Shoot them all. Shoot them all, Gordon. Quick. He's, got... he's getting very high, this screen. Oh, he still hasn't got a bomb, and he's going to have to shoot all these as well. He's shooting furiously. Now, he can just shoot the other yes. one. It's going to fall down. He still now, needs one more he line. He needs one more after this. It's going to it fall. Oh, how lucky can you get, he's Dominic? He's going to do it. In fact, not only is he going to get five, he's going to get a four. He clipped in five now. Yeah. He's actually got eight. Gordon Burns tops the challenge with consummate ease. Well played, Gordon. Excellent stuff. Let me take it off you before you do any more damage with it. Well, Gordon, I tell you, I had my doubts. I must admit at the start, your job was on the line, but you, but you, you did brilliantly. Well, it was when I played my natural game, Brian, you know. I, did. <laughs> um, no, I enjoyed it very much. It was great fun, and uh, my fingers were crossed because uh, if I'd screwed that one up, then <laughs> I was in real trouble. That's right. That is, not only did you get five, you actually got eight lines instead of five. Well, it was nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you provided us with a lot of enjoyment tonight, so let's award Gordon Burns the Games Master Gordon Joystick! <laughs> Another round of applause for our special guest tonight, Gordon Barnes. <laughs> While Auntie Marisha gives Gordon a proper send off, some more lost souls seek salvation in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Hello, young whippersnapper. And just how can I enlighten your existence? In the Ice Palace on Zelda 3, there is a room with a switch on the floor. But there is a door I cannot get through because it does not stay open long enough for me to get through. How do you do it? The easiest way to overcome this particular problem is to collect the cane of Samara from the sixth dungeon and use that to create a block. 
which you can then push onto the switch to keep the door open. Thanks very much. Oh, quite all right. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. I'm having trouble with my soggy flans. I wonder if you can help me firm them. Hello, Morisha. How good of you to pay me a visit. Flans can indeed be difficult. May I suggest that you use more flour, less milk, and cook them at a slightly lower temperature. <laughs> Not that my temperature's ever been low looking at you, Marisha. Oh, you cheeky monkey. Bye-bye, Marisha. <sighs> ah. Who's next? Hello, Games Master. On Mickey Mouse on the SNES, I found the harp that you told me about last week, but I'm still finding it a bit too difficult. Can you give me any more help? My word, um, you really do have a severe problem, don't you? However, there is another energy heart, and it can be found on level four. Equipped with the grappling hook, take a leap of faith into thin air, using the hook to break your fall. Now, swing across the bottom of the level to a secret platform where you should find a chest that will yield another extra heart. Thanks a lot. That's all we've got time for tonight, but don't forget to keep the queries coming. My delight at seeing some more happy customers is tempered by the ominous smells wafting up from Auntie Mauritius' kitchen, telling me this show is nearly over. So let's hasten along to Games Master for the final challenge. For my next challenge, we cross the Atlantic with football frenzy. The first person to reach ten points wins the encounter. I won't attempt to divulge the rules of American football. Suffice to say, there's not a million miles away from rugby, except that the ball can be passed forward and the players wear silly pads. <laughs> May the best team win. For this challenge, we've got a two-on-one situation. The combined might of the Celestine brothers, Thomas and Christopher, against the awesome power of London Monarchs running back, Victor Ibubadike. <laughs> Welcome, Thomas and Christopher. All right. Now, Victor, you are a running back. Are you going to keep the ball on the ground then tonight? I'm not going to say anything right now. He's keeping his cards close to his chest. Now, there's actually two of you against Victor tonight. How are you splitting the responsibilities? Thomas, tell me about um, it. I'm going to be defence because I'm better at protecting the goal than he is. And he's going to be offence because he's going to score much better than me. Well, it's all very tense here. Right, let's have the very important coin toss. Victor, I'd ask you to call when the coin is in the air. Heads it is. So, Victor, do you want to kick off or receive? I'll receive. <laughs> All right, Victor, if you'd like to sit in the left-hand chair, we want the defensive Celestine, which is Thomas, in the right-hand chair. Yeah. And helping me with the playbook tonight is Games Master's very own Stephen Magdalene. Welcome, Stephen. Good evening, Dominic. Now, any tips for our uh, American footballers well, tonight? Well, not really. They've got to play to their strengths. I mean, the Cobras are a very rounded team, both in offence and defence. The Bisons, in comparison, have some very good wide receivers. They want to make use of those. A few pointers for you at home. The first team to get the 10 points wins tonight's challenge. This is achieved by scoring a touchdown. Basically, carry the ball deep into your opponent's half by either passing it or running it until eventually you get past the zero-yard line into the end zone. Are our competitors ready? Yep. Then Thomas Celestine, kick off. So there we have Victor Bubadike receiving the kick off. Deep into Here's the, the Cobras on the left in the red shots. Thomas kick. Celestine's the bison's on the right. It's a very deep kick there. Now we see okay. Victor Bubadike okay. kick off return here. Oh, lovely weaving his way in right there. Brilliant kick off return. He's going all the way up to the 30, up to the 40. The great, great play. Ready, he's thinking he's about, about it and he's, he's passing it. out. The man's there. Oh, no. yes, complete. To the wide receiver there for a first down. But the computer actually chooses the best defensive option for the player. He actually has another control. pass. It's gone player. out wide. Oh, oh, it's a lovely pass. It's complete. Great pass. Here he goes again. I think he's going to try for another passing play here. And he's hanging about on it. there. Oh, he nearly oh, got sacked. Bit, but he's wide open there. Oh, oh no, yes. No. Another first down for Victor. Oh, okay. Inside of the end zone. Down. Inside of the end zone. He's waiting there. The defence are getting nowhere near them. It's a lovely nowhere. football. He's just nearly there. He's in the end zone. Down. That's what he's doing with I 
here goes victory but they get for the extra point it's not like conventional american football it's not a kick it's actually another passing or running play there and it hasn't in fact worked which means no. victory but has failed the extra point so it's still six nil to make it slightly easier for the Bisons there, Dominic. That's right, it means if Victor had got that, all he would have needed was a field goal, three points, to get to ten and win the match. Here now we, we have the Bisons on the attack here. Okay, and the offensive player, he's pressing his A button very quickly to get the speed up, dodging his opponent. Dodging him, oh, lovely yes, choice, good defensive block there. He pressing, pressing A, he blocks or he tackles, here we go. Yeah, oh, he's, he's going all the way, it's a volley! Oh! He's eventually brought down, but that was a brilliant one there. Ready, and here we go, they've got the snap, they're going for the run again. He's through, he's through, he's, he's, through. Through. he's busted through, and he kicked all the way to the end. Yes, he has! It's six all now, the Celestines level it. So here go the Celestines for the extra point attempt. They're going through the middle again, they've done it, yes, it's, it's good. good! The Celestines get the extra point, which means, crucially, it puts them 8-6 ahead. If you run... Uh, an extra point attempt like they did. You don't not only just get one point, you get two points, which means all the Celestines need now is a field goal to win. To kick off by the Celestines. Yeah, it's loose. The ball's it's loose. there. Victory Bibidik is kick off a ton of score. He's going wide to the left. They're trying to get him. They've knocked him in. down. Ready, the ball's back. He's got good pass protection. No one has broken oh. through. It's a little shot when he's open. It's he's open. And he's running. He's open. He keeps going, but he's First stopped down. there. But it was a very, very good first down from Victor. Getting very, very close, just to remind you, Storic's at home. He needs one more touchdown. All he needs to do is get the ball into the end zone of the Celestines. And he's caught again. Nearly intercepted, though, nearly intercepted. There goes Victor. He's going up the snap. He's going there. He's gone back, giving himself a little bit more time to pass. It's open, it's there. The wide receiver's oh. got it. A little bit of a fight oh. going on, and he's down, but he's getting very, very close to the Celestines line here. Bison's 15 yard line, the comeback goes back, gives himself Takes some more time. time. Puts it wide to the left, he could get it! Yes! It's a touchdown! A brilliant play fix to the left hand side, tossed it to the left wide right receiver, into the end zone. 12 8 to Victor, victory, Pimudiki is the winner! <laughs> what an amazing encounter! Right down to the wire there. Now, let me go to you first of all, Christopher. No, it was just too good for me, I don't know why. <laughs> you know, a, a very, very stout defence Victor did. Let's go on to the Celestine defence. You had some problems coping with Victor in the air there. His offence was just too good. <laughs> well, Victor, they're full of praise for your play. I was very surprised, actually, that you didn't keep it on the ground. You went straight to the air there. Yeah, well, I thought my receivers were quite good enough, you know. I mean, even though the game was close, I knew we'd come through in the end. Well, listen, not only did you come through at the end, you walk away with television's most stunning prize, the Gordon Gives Master Joystick. <laughs> so let's give another round of applause for Thomas and Christopher Celestine and Victor E. Bimenike. OK, that's the gong there, which means it's supper time on the rig. Auntie Marisha's done us some boiled tadpoles in a basket. Don't miss next week's show when we'll have those naughty East London pop personalities, East 17. Good night. The Games Master Club is open to all our viewers. For the measly sum of £11.15, you get the club pack, which includes such modern essentials as challenge stopwatches, badges, posters, fact sheets, and much, much more. To join, send a cheque or postal order for £11.15 to the address on screen. Or you can call 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 p.m. at cheap rate and 48 p.m. at all other times. You must have permission before you make the call.